it! Annihilate! Destroy! It's Doctor Who Night on BBC Two. always getting into trouble but the one thing he would always rely on to save him was this the TARDIS now it may look like an old-fashioned London police box to you but as a physicist what intrigues me is that it's a very sophisticated space-time machine it looked like a London police box because of a clever ability common to all time machines built on Gallifrey one of its functions is that it can change shape to blend perfectly with its surrounding environment. Unfortunately, this TARDIS wasn't working properly. So the chameleon circuit stuck. Exactly. In Totter's Yard. Yeah, in our Totter's Yard. Anyway, it was ages ago, it doesn't matter. She was in on Gallifrey for repair when I bought her back. Scientifically, the idea of a chameleon circuit was, of course, way ahead of its time. Materials that could behave like a chameleon and change their shape and colour to fit in with their surroundings weren't even on the drawing board in the 1960s. It's only now with the new science of nanotechnology, in which we hope to build things molecule by molecule, that it becomes even conceivable to speculate about it. There are two possibilities. The outside of the TARDIS could be made from a synthetic polymer, which can expand up to five times its normal size. Its exact shape will be controlled by chemicals sent down tiny capillaries, just like blood vessels. The other theoretical possibility will be an amazing material dubbed utility fog. Here, rather than the shape of the TARDIS being built up atom by atom, tiny molecular robots would link together to form a solid mass that could change shape. In the case of the TARDIS, these robots would be controlled by an onboard computer or chameleon circuit. In theory, we should be able to do things like this. There. Do we have a door there? Yes, I suppose that's useful. Well, we've got to be able to get in and out. No, no I mean being able to change like that. But the most magical property about the TARDIS is the difference between the outside and the inside. Which box is larger? That one. Now which is larger? That one. But it looks smaller. Well, that's because it's further away. Exactly. If you could keep that, exactly that distance away, and have it here, the large one would fit inside a small one. That's silly. But there is another way of explaining how the inside of the TARDIS could be bigger than the outside. Theoretically, it's possible to join two distant points in space via a wormhole or tunnel that provides a shortcut through some higher dimension. The inside of the TARDIS isn't really inside a phone box at all, but in a different part of the galaxy altogether, and so could be as big as it likes. Wormholes can also explain how the TARDIS dematerializes and materializes in different places. Getting around the Doctor's universe is a bit like getting around London. It takes ages to walk anywhere, but by using the underground, with its system of tunnels crisscrossing under the city, we can take shortcuts. It's just the same with wormholes. However, we would need a very weird type of material to make a wormhole. It'd have to have negative mass. Since it has no call to be here, the art lies in the fact that it is here. To make a TARDIS, we'd need the equivalent of the combined mass of all the planets in the solar system. Excellent. But who knows? Maybe the Time Lords on Gallifrey know something we don't. Time is marching on, but stay with BBC Two. The Daleks are coming. Don't move. Exterminate all human. Exterminate all.